the first member of Generation Z to be elected to Congress. Maxwell Alejandro Frost is proud to represent the people of Central Florida. Yeah. Lots of people love Florida, love Florida, live Florida. Um, so um, as a young member of Congress and Afro-Latino, Congressman Frost brings a fresh progressive perspective to an institution that was formerly out of reach for young working black and Latino Americans. Now as a freshman member, Frost has been appointed to the powerful Committee on Oversight and Accountability, where he will deliver and is delivering on his mission of ushering justice and transparency to Floridians while fighting against House Republicans' extremist attempts to politicize the work of the committee by attacking democracy and promoting ridiculous MAGA conspiracies. In Congress, Frost is committed to representing the people of his hometown in Orlando and Central Florida and being their voice in Washington, D.C. He's laser focused on working to deliver change and results on issues of housing affordability, health care, abortion rights, LGBTQ plus rights, voting rights, uh, climate change, and more. Um, he is a rising star in our party, and I couldn't be more proud to have him here. Thank you so much for being here, Congressman Frost. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, how's everybody doing? Well, it is so good to be here today, and I, I appreciate the introduction. I'm, I'm Congressman Maxwell Frost. I am proud to be from the great state of Florida. I'm a Florida man. Through and through. Well, listen, y'all, I'm, I'm going to be uh, pretty brief, but I, I want to take a moment to talk a little bit about the coalition and what it means to organize around the climate crisis. Um, I'm actually excited about the opportunity and ability to look within this struggle and figure out how we can atone for the wrongs done to marginalized communities across this country as we fight this existential threat. That we know that the cost of doing nothing is far greater than the cost of taking bold action right now. I want to tell you, I come from a state that is a frontline community in the climate crisis. Many of you know right now, the water surrounding the state of Florida is the temperature of a hot tub. That hot water is fuel for hurricanes. Hurricanes now are lasting longer, creating more destruction, killing more people, and displacing more people. My district of Orlando, Florida, received hundreds of thousands of people from the island of Puerto Rico. After Hurricane Maria, those folks had to move to Florida. Those folks are the largest group of climate refugees to move to this country. Not just that, but extreme heat is killing more people than ever before. We are experiencing some of the hottest, not just summers, we said it's the hottest summers, hottest time periods that we ever have. Did you know that extreme heat is killing more people than hurricanes and tornadoes combined? I'm grateful to uh, Secretary of Labor Julie Su. They're right now uh, involved in a rulemaking process to provide complete federal preemption of all of these damn states like Florida that took away the heat protections. Can you believe that in the state of Florida? Yeah. Can you believe that in the state of Florida right now, they passed a law that said that these companies or, or that said that cities cannot institute heat protections for their workers? A damn bottle of water. Shade. What I would say is the most, the, mi the minimum you need to do as an employer to protect your workers because of the failure and inaction of politic politicians to get the climate crisis under wraps. But I'll tell you, because all of this is going on in my state right now, for the first time, there are people I've never met before, people that I disagree with on a lot of things, that are coming out of the woodwork, coming up to me, coming up to organizations and saying, Maxwell, I'm a conservative, but I'm a business owner. And these hurricanes are hurting my wallet. What can we do about the climate crisis? I mean, it's a damn shame it takes hitting your wallet to care about the um, existential threat of, our, of humanity. But I want to end with this. 
more people are joining this movement right now because the climate crisis isn't coming, it is here. And we got to make sure we're ready as a movement to bring these folks in, to broaden this coalition. And so my ask of everyone here is as we go back to our homes on Friday, let's go out in our communities. Let's go into these marginalized communities filled with workers who are working in these hot suns and this extreme weather. Bring them into this movement so we can tell the true story of this country and how we must come together to save this planet and to save humanity. Does that sound good, y'all? All right. Well, hey, thank you so much. It's good to be here. God bless you. And let's save this planet. Thank you.